I do think it starts with like loving yourself. Um, I feel like mm, for me, I feel like um, if we could love ourselves, then we are able to set boundaries. But what happens is like, I think I was talking about this earlier. We aren't we aren't really loved in the 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 right way from the beginning, so we don't even know what real love look like. Yeah, we we come up in households where. I mean, shut up before I give you something to cry for. You know what I'm saying? Like, things like that. Or even shit, as you become a teenager or an adult, your mother tried to hold relationships for men. Relationships over your hair. Like, you got into this relationship, you care more about her than you care about me. Or well, actually, if you want to be honest, Ma, I'm sorry, but she shows up for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you call me when you need something. But I say that to say, a lot of times we aren't, we aren't taught to love ourselves. So, like, if I can't love myself... How can you expect me to love you? Right. Right? Yeah. But for you, that's unfair because you should be in a, in a relationship where somebody can truly love you for who you are. Right. But it's like, especially as a man, I don't think I've ever been loved for who I am. Ever. Right. Like, I have to get up and show and prove in the world. I have to do something for people to love me. Like, I was just thinking about this earlier. Like, I feel like this might sound crazy. A woman can go get her body done, take a picture. Thousands of likes, man. People like, oh my gosh, he fire. A man gotta like either work his ass off to get abs or win an award or I don't know, like he gotta do something to show and prove for people to be like, that's lit. And like, we I'm sorry, if that makes sense, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, we gotta do something. I don't think we're ever like like genuinely loved just for who we are. Right. That makes sense? No, that makes like, a lot of sense. And I say that to say, like, if that's if that's mentally how I've been treated when I'm with somebody, unconsciously I'm treating you like that. Right. And you might not be used to that, if that makes sense, right? Like yeah. I'm I need you to show and prove. I need you to do something to deserve my love. Yes. And like from a woman, you probably like, that's the worst thing in the world. You probably think I'm the worst person. Like, huh? Like Listen. you should love me because I'm me. And like I nobody loves me for me. Right. And I I truly <clears throat> believe that you only can love to the level that you love yourself. Yeah. So if you feel as though your value is based off of what you do mm. or how dependable you are or how you can show up for other people. That to you is what love means. But love should never be built off of love for yourself should never be based on external. Mm. You know, it has to start with you. And that, that was, that was, and still is something that I'm adjusting to. Um, after I got divorced, I then had to sit back and say, who am I outside of the duties of being a wife? being a mom, taking care of the children, because now I'm co-parenting, you know, now my ex has them every other week. I have them every other week. So that week when I don't have the kids, man, in the beginning, it's been a little over a year now since we've been divorced in the beginning, like the first few months, that was rough for me because I didn't know what to do with myself on my week off. It's like, I was tired, mm. but I was missing my kids. I wanted the break, but I was missing my kids. I didn't feel like I had any uh, true value because I didn't have somebody to take care of. Mm. I had to take care of me. And then that's, that was like a, the next level of my journey is that you could be exhausted and sit on this couch and you're still enough. Mm. You could be tapped out for the day and just say, you know what? I'm just going to sit here and watch some Netflix because I can't take anymore. Like I'm tired and you're still enough. Like you're still valuable. It doesn't have, I, I don't have to be working myself into submission, <laughs> beating myself down and depleting myself to say, all right, now I'm worthy of being loved. You know, I felt like for a lot of, um, a lot of my marriage and even in the dating years, I felt like the entire time I was trying to prove myself to him. And it wasn't that he required that. That's what I was that was, say. yeah, that was yeah. my own issue. That was me. I felt as though, because he was the one that um, he played in the NFL. He he bust his butt to make the money that he made. And I wanted him to relax. I, I didn't want him to have to want for anything. Mm. I wanted him to just be able to enjoy his life. But I didn't feel like even after marriage, I didn't even feel like I had that right. It was like, well, you made this money. You you did all of this. So I don't have a right to just sit down and relax. You know, and I felt as though I had to show him that I was worth it. Like, I had to show him that I'm not here for your money. I'm here because I, I love you. And I felt like I had to prove that to him by 
not sitting down. So even though like, you know, we might have a cleaning service that comes through every other week or the week that they ain't there, who cleaning? I'm cleaning. I have no problem with mopping and cleaning dishes and cooking. I did all of that. And I look back now and I'm like, wow, I had the opportunity to actually just sit back and do nothing. And I didn't take advantage of it because I didn't look at myself like I deserved it. I felt like I had to keep working because I based it off of what he saw as valuable, which was his finances. So I was trying to meet him there, not realizing like, okay, well, now that we're husband and wife, we both can enjoy life together. And it would be times where I swear I would like days where I was really tired and I would sit down and I'd just be laying on the couch like I'm tired. And I it, it almost felt like whether he intentionally did it or not, the way I received it was almost like, what are you laying down for? Like, that needs to be done. That needs to be done. So then it's like, no sooner than I'm relaxed, it's like, all right, let me get up and handle this. Let me handle the kids. Let me, you know. So there were times later on where we would have talks and I'd be like, look, I'm exhausted. And then he would step up more. During quarantine, he started stepping up. Um, but then the consistency wasn't always there. Um, I was trying to build businesses. A mistake that I made was I thought that he would show up for me the same way that I showed up for him when he was pursuing some of his goals. Um, so when he was pursuing his goals, I made sure everything was handled. Like kids, you know, if we had to pick up and move, do whatever. You go do your job, I'm going to do everything else. So then when I started doing Housewives and I started uh, my business, Miller Eve Essentials, um, I was expecting that same in return where he was very open and free with like, all right, yeah, I can I can put money here. I can I can, you know, you know, hire the nanny for extra time or whatever in the ways I still had to manage those things, mm. you know, so I'm managing that. Plus, I'm trying to build this business from scratch. And it was like, I'm telling him I need more of you. But he wasn't understanding because he's like, I'm paying for that. You know, I'm providing for you. So it's like we were both speaking this different language. He was still doing, but it wasn't in the way that I needed it at the moment. I needed more of him to physically do or help or whatever. Do so. you think you will ever find a man that's going to speak the same language as you? I speak a different language now. So, yeah. So not to be insensitive or rude or anything. Do you think that, and I mean, from what I'm hearing, like, it was you? It's always, it always starts with self. I can see where it was me, but I, there's things that I felt as though from him that I'm careful to speak on because he still is the father of my children. Mm -hmm. And we do have a co-parenting situation. So I don't want to say anything that will cause issue mm -hmm. in that, you know, speaking publicly. Um, he doesn't speak publicly. You know, so he kind of like lays low. I've always been out on my platform yeah. talking, so I'm gonna continue to do that. But I also want to show respect. Yeah, I understand. But yeah, when I'm understand. when I'm speaking about the marriage, I'm always gonna focus on me and what yeah. I did. Okay, that makes um, sense. Yeah, so I don't, I don't. There's a lot that I could say, but I refrain. Because, no, I'm not gonna ask about. It. I get it. Yeah, I understand, and I respect yeah. that. I only say that because that's how I look at it the same way. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I look at my uh, situation like. If I had boundaries, then there would have been a lot of mistakes that I didn't make. But right. because I didn't have boundaries, I got to own the mistakes. Oh, yeah. No matter what, because I did it. Right. Right? It don't matter if you provoke me or whatever I want to have an excuse to say. Yeah. It don't matter because I did it. Exactly. Because if I would have been like, you know what? I don't like that. I'm going to walk away. Yep. Then I wouldn't have did whatever reaction I thought. Yep. Right? And I think that's what... um. I had to learn, and that's that's what I had to learn about like loving yourself. Mm -hmm. And even when I hear you say like um, speak the different language, like that's something that I it resonated with me. But when I hear like my my ex wife speak, it's like I hear like a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like I think it's two things that really hurt. To be honest, like it's like, and I never really spoke about this. And it's like to hear her speak on it, and to like feel how I feel, and it, it be so different. I'm like, damn. Like, cause me is like. I feel like we just spoke a different language. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In the beginning, we just didn't have enough bound. We didn't have enough courage or love for ourselves enough to like say no, right? Like I feel like it's things like she fell in love with somebody that she never would have liked, but the same way the same person she fell in love with was this, eventually was the same person that she didn't like. You know what I'm saying? Friendly, whatever the case may be. Like mm -hmm. you knew you didn't like that. Same with me. Right. And 
I feel like that's me. You know what I'm saying? And I say like for me it's like it was just a different language. Like I was asking for things for her that she I don't want to say she couldn't get, but it just not wasn't her. Same vice versa. Just like just exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And I look at it as like, man, I just feel like men are men and women are women. And I feel like every time I hear it, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it makes me question, like, yo, will I ever be a person that I meet that speak the same language? Yeah. Or do I change and then it levels the playing field, I guess. I don't know. That's why I asked that question. Like, is it yeah. it has to be. You know right. what I mean? Well, I, I feel like everybody's world is their own. I feel like everything in life is based on your your experience and your perspective. Mm-hmm. So it's not about changing the core of who you are. You are who you are. Right. But can you grow? Mm-hmm. Can you do things bit differently? Can you recognize and accept your part? And I feel like the more that you do that, the more that you elevate yourself, the mm. more that you start, like you said, setting boundaries. So the reason why we have these failed relationships is because we didn't have those boundaries at first. Like I will fully admit, and and it's funny, like my family says, yeah, you created that monster. I didn't want him doing anything. I waited on him hand and foot. I remember I was pregnant, living in Alabama uh, while he was coaching. And I mean, I cooked dinner every single night back when we used to eat. I don't eat meat anymore, but I used to literally, I would buy a bunch of meat from Whole Foods. I would wash it up, season it, vacuum seal it. I would have it all loaded in the freezer, and I'd tell them just, like, whatever meat you want me to cook tonight, take it out, sit it in the sink, you know, and I'll, I'll prepare it. And he doesn't like leftovers. So I, w- I learned how to make smaller portions so that I could cook for him every night. And I love doing that for him. I love to, ba- to know that he didn't have to lift a finger. That's what I enjoyed. That was what that version of me enjoyed, Until who didn't love tired. herself, who didn't have boundaries, who got exhausted, who then, because of the exhaustion and nobody was reaching to pull her from – underneath the water it's like i had to set these boundaries and then that's when the trouble started that's when the issues began because those boundaries like you said if you would have set those in the beginning had you known better you probably wouldn't have been attracted to each other that's the shit that made me want to say fuck love like because it's like not literally but bro don't got nothing to do with me just like me it's like (laughs) it's like not as again that's what hurts so bad because, like, bro, I'm not asking. Like, I'm going to love you regardless. Mm. I'm going to love you if you do that or not. So the fact that you did that, right? Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. You did that to make me happy. Now, I, right? Or now, like, a year, two years ago, by you looking at me like, wow, well, you don't do this for me. And it's like, bro, that's not, I didn't. I don't know. I didn't even know. Like, I just thought that's something that you love doing. You told right. me you love doing this. And now it creates resentment. And it's like, what the f-? Like, that shit, <laughs> that hurts because it's like, yo, like, I didn't do anything to create this resentment. Now we resent each other. Now you right. mad at me. And it's like, yeah, but that's you know, exhausting, bro. I was watching this. I was watching a reel on Instagram that came up and it made so much sense. The young lady said that women marry potential mm-hmm. and men marry women so that they, they marry a woman so that they will stay the same. They want that woman to, not change. Like, yeah. don't change. You yeah. be who you are yeah. when I marry you and stay that way. Mm. And they say that women, we typically will marry potential. So we're not marrying the man that's in front of us. We're marrying the man that we think you can be. Mm. So what happens is most women in the beginning of a relationship, we're showing you through our actions how we want to be loved. Mm. We're not We're not doing those things for you simply just for you. We're doing it because we're trying to give you a template of this how us. I want to be treated. And maybe you can look at it that way, too. Maybe it is a little bit of training and manipulation in there, you know? But I think that that's what the problem is, is that we have not learned to love the present moment. We're always either reflecting on the past or we're looking so far into the future that we never stop in the present moment and say, do I accept you for who you are right now? 